I'm sorry. I, mean, I was talking in Dutch. All right. <laughs> What did you say? We're uh, live now. Okay. Okay. So, good morning and welcome to the art, artists and the brand image. Our panelists today are Moti Abramovich, Bernhard Bauhofer, Gay Skrinen, Bertrand Freisleben, and Stuart Semple. So I'm going to introduce each one of you individually before your presentations. But my name is Laura Lopez Paniagua, and I'm the chair to this panel. Thank you for being here today. So I start. In 1936, Salvador Dali attended the first surrealist exhibition in London wearing a diving helmet. He sat among the other artists while they presented the show and slowly started to appear restless and shake in his chair. Minutes later, his restlessness had become frenzy. He waved his arms violently in the air while the crowd <laughs> laughed, amused by the spectacle. Though it looked like another of Dali's stunts, in reality, he was suffocating. When he finally liberated from the helmet, he uttered, I just wanted to show that I was plunging deeply into the human mind. So sometimes developing your brand as an artist can be a very dangerous affair. <coughs> it seems appropriate to start with Dali, because it is often forgotten that he was arguably the first artist who understood the power of building a brand in contemporary terms. He self-promoted blatantly. He cultivated his status as a celebrity figure and worked for commercial brands such as Chupa Chups, Lanvin, and Playboy. Nevertheless, though he is still one of the best known artists of the 20th century, His commercialism did him no favors regarding his perception within art history. While he's tremendously appreciated by the crowds, he's widely dismissed as a mere populist by many experts. His success clouded his quality as an artist, so to speak. So I'm truly honored to be joined today by two experts in branding, Bernhard and Motti, and three artists. Gays, Bertrand, and Stewart, some of whom have been involved in very public controversies that may have helped them to build their brand. <laughs> I am hoping to learn from you because I don't know much about the topic. In fact, branding and in general, any reference to commercial endeavors is taboo in the visual arts. I am a writer, curator, and educator, and have worked in different capacities in the field of art for about 20 years. Within art education, a direct approach to the business aspects of professional art making is rarely contemplated. Also, the structures that lead artists to a successful career in terms of gallery representation, exhibitions in prestigious venues, and commercial success are very opaque. Artists seem to be required to be successful spontaneously without ever applying any conscious strategy to achieve their goals. <laughs> and artists like Jeff Koons or Damien Hirst who brazenly reveal and profit from the art business are heavily criticized. So as our host suggests, Would positive branding destroy our image of the artist as a free creative? Businesses employ brand creators. Do artists? How can a young artist develop their own brand image? What distinguishing features would a brand creator highlight? And I'm going to start by introducing Bernhard Bauhofer, our first speaker. Bernhard Bauhofer is the founder and CEO of Sparring Partners, a company which specializes in corporate and personal reputation management. After studying sociology and economics at the Ludwig Maximilian University Munich, he worked in all disciplines of communications and branding in Europe, South America, and the USA for over 20 years. 
Since the year 2000, he has been pioneering the corporate reputation management <clears throat> sorry, discipline in Switzerland and Europe. And his unique methodology encompasses all reputation drivers, which have to be managed in the relationship with multiple stakeholders. Apart from a reputed management consultant and speaker, Bauhofer is also the author of several book classics like Reputation Management and Respect, and lately Corona, Insights for Life. It's very interesting, by the way. So please, go ahead, Bernhard. Oh, thank you very much, Laura, uh, for the introduction. I feel very privileged to, to talk to artists. I'm uh, only a, 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 um, um, I'm not a professional artist, obviously, but I feel very comfortable in, in, in uh, being with artists. So I do have some connection with them automatically because I admire how they live and how they um, and their approach to life. As you said, I have um, extensive uh, experience in building brands and saving brands. Um, corporate brands as well as personal brands. And I think um, when we talk about um, terminology like brand building, brand awareness, brand recognition, and brand assets, this sounds very technical to an artist. But I think an artist <coughs> intrinsically and intuitively knows exactly about his or her brand. Um, I think he's the best, she or she is the best person to who? guide and lead sorry. and define the brand strategy, yes? Yeah, I lost the name. In general, he means in general, the artist. The artist in general, in okay. general. Okay. Yeah, the best one, of course, when it comes to um, brand communications, they should have support from professionals. And now we have all the communication journals um, and we do have social media, which mm -hmm. I think is a fantastic tool for artists to get known and build their brand. Uh, but at the same time, I think when it comes to branding, um, it's, it's about a signature. Even Goya in the, in the early days knew how to brand himself. He was uh, going against the establishment uh, long before Jeff Koons was monetizing their brand as it. He was ex 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 uh, very well known, Goya, how to go against the establishment. And I think that's the specific, uh, specific position of an artist. He should be outside the establishment. So managing... Um, a brand to obviously <coughs> to, um, economically to, to monetize it is, is not really going um, well with an artist. I think the artist has to be outside the society and be, uh, be not function as a, as, a, as a business. So um, my approach is reputation management. It goes just beyond the, the sheer concept of branding. Uh, we are seeing now these days that everybody has a reputation and a reputation means about is, is the importance of managing expectations of stakeholders towards um, your person. In the case of an artist, it's a curator, it's a client, it's museums, it's, it's the, the peers, the, the art world. I think it's very critical these days um, when we see that Russian oligarchs like Botanin, for instance, are supporting art. And I think each artist has to ask him or herself um, if they want to be associated with somebody who is supporting a war, right? So there are reputational risks for artists. Or we're looking back when you not only go for painters, but we're going to music. Um, big celebrities were performing for oligarchs for receiving hundreds of thousands, of even millions for a, a five-song um, gig. Uh, so that's quite, uh, it's, for, it's interesting from a monetary point of view, but when you talk about the reputation of an artist as not being able to be bought in, in uh, uh, speaking like so, I think it's very, very risky to run this business. So I, to, to sum it up uh, with, the, with respect to the uh, topic of our session is, yes, you can have a, a brand support, a support building your brand, at the same time, you have to listen to your inner voice, to your soul, and your personal vision as an artist to how to how far you want to go in in, in building this brand. And of course, one has to make money. One cannot live until <laughs> you are dead, but somebody may, uh, 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 else will re reap the fruits you you were seeding. But I think it, it's a very careful um, way to manage professionally uh, your your brand and reputation and make business out of it, and at the same time, not lose your identity and your soul. 
I uh, I agree. Wait, wait. I was uh, very fortunate. I don't. Uh, I don't want to sell my art. Definitely not. We had family money. Ah, this is good. <laughs> please, uh, please uh, allow me to uh, interrupt you. I'm sorry. Uh, if you agree, first we make all of our presentations and then we start the discussion. Okay? Yeah. And uh, I'm already taking notes about everything please do as well and uh, then we uh, we continue with the discussion among us so um, our next speaker is uh, Stuart Temple Stuart Temple is a multidisciplinary artist curator and activist his artworks often touch on community and connection and deal with sociological themes He works across painting, sculpture, technology, performance, and happenings. Recently, Stuart founded Giant, a new publicly funded gallery on the south coast of England, where he directs the program. As a broadcaster, his documentary for Radio 4 on hostile design was nominated for a Radio Academy Award last year. His works have been presented at the Denver Art Museum, Fed Square in Melbourne, Barbican, ICA, and Whitworth. He is perhaps best known for using the internet as a performance space through his work, disseminating the pinkest pink and the blackest black paint. Hello, Stuart, welcome. Hello, nice to be here with you. Thanks for having me. Um, I will uh, share my screen and show you a few things that I found. Um, but it's an interesting topic. There's a lot of, um, oh, how do I do it? No, this one. Da -da -da -da. Okay, hang on. Where is it? Oh, no. oh, it's dropped it. The button. No, the button. I just saw something. Okay, don't wait. Okay, here we go. Can you I see that? Yes. Okay, right. Let's Got it. That. Got it. <laughs> Okay, here we go. That's all right, isn't it? No. Yes. Anyhow, yes. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, really interesting topic. I've um, obviously been making art for 20 years, and I've been lucky enough to collaborate with some really big brands as well. Um, but, but I'm not going to go into... Oh, why is it playing it? That's not very good, is it? Sorry, everybody. I'm not very good with this. Um, let me try again. Okay. Um, so let me see if I can do this in a few minutes. So the question is, how, how can a young artist develop the brand in their lifetime? Do artists employ brand creators? Does positive brand link destroy the image of an artist as a free creative? I believe um, a brand is simply a holder of ideas. It doesn't actually mean anything. It's a, a vacuous kind of holder of <coughs> stuff. So all of these logos, if you're thinking about McDonald's or Nike or whatever, they stand for something else. They're symbols of something. But they're kind of empty. If you think about the transition of McDonald's over time, it's really shifted from being a sort of family orientated place to, to lately being to do with um, sort of good farming methods and, and kind of almost a health brand. And Nike, if you think about it, has been synonymous for many years with a certain kind of idea of go getting and activity and, uh, and stuff. But what we think about brands, so whether we're talking about Miro or Picasso or Damien Hirst, Um, is a sense of differentiation, a sense of uniqueness. The, the, the artist means something. It stands for something wider than it is. It's like a pointer to the work. So um, that, that, for me, is more than um, the work itself, of course. So if we think about Banksy or Jeff Koons, I'm talking about the name of the artist, the artist themselves as a brand as a, or as a personal brand. Um, obviously, the work... The style of the work can become um, synonymous with the brand in its own right. But I don't want to focus on that. I think we're talking about the personal brand of the artist, i.e. the image of the artist, the artist himself, the name of the artist, not actually the work. So um, I want to talk a little bit about that um, and how you develop the work 
or the, the the brand of the work. And of course, we can think about people like Ai Weiwei, Jeff Koons, David Hockney, Andy Warhol, and they all have strong symbols of their work, it's don't they? Um, they all have very strong symbols of their work, whether it's Hockney. It's or... as well. so, sorry? I, 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 I was talking to myself. Oh, OK, I... mate. Yeah, that's <laughs> good. Um, yeah, anyway, so the idea of developing the mark, yeah, so... Excuse me, Stuart, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, gentlemen, I, I, I'm really I, I said it, it's very interesting. OK, cool, mate. Well, that's good. OK, um, uh, it's impossible to turn off the microphone, so while others are speaking... <laughs> Okay. Me, I, I, I'm getting there. Um, but what, what I'm trying to say is that developing this sense of style or your own brand is something that can be thrust upon you, OK? So what I'm trying to say is that the galleries and the curators and the market itself um, are very keen to establish a brand. And when I curate a show, perhaps at my gallery, I'm really thinking about how I do the artist justice in terms of like yes. their story and what they want to convey. So in a way, they haven't employed me to be a brand maker. But what I'm doing is I'm making sure the audience connects with their work. And therefore, through that process, we establish something called fame. And when you have fame around an artist, what happens is there's a sense of brand, a sense of what they stand for. And many of my friends decide to make a very different type of work that, of course, doesn't fit with what they're perceived to be as a brand. And that kind of um, holds them in, in a way. And I think that's really interesting. So I think artists can very deliberately construct their brand. And we see that in people like Jeff Koons or Damien Hirst, of course, Picasso. Um, um, and they carefully cultivate that kind of brand image in, in cohort with their galleries and dealers and, and, and publicists and things. So I've never really done that. My work's just kind of evolved and always moved. So it's never really stayed that static. But why I think that matters, though, is um, when it comes to commerce, of course, because collectors, auction houses and institutions need to back things that are winners. And I find myself falling into this trap as well when I curate shows in the gallery. If I get a big brand named artist in the gallery, all of a sudden I get press and I get visitors. So it becomes a self-fulfilling cycle. Um, I could go on about this all day, but I don't have very long, so I'm just going to summarise very quickly. How can a young artist uh, develop a brand in their lifetime? I think by being consistent, um, you would have to develop some sort of fame around your person, not just the work, which would then support the work. Um, thinking of yourself as a sort of persona or a container for an idea. Um, do artists employ brand creators? Not that I know of, but I think that they do unwittingly in the terms of commercial galleries who are absolutely aware of their reputation. Um, and does positive branding destroy our image as a free creative artist? It depends what the brand is. I mean, you might be a very cool, very connected, community orientated artist. Um, and that might be your brand, which might be much better than looking like uh, uh, an over commercialistic um, artist who's just out to kind of get the money. So if you're thought of like someone like Kerry James Marshall, very credible painter, a lot of respect for him at the moment. It's a lovely brand to be. We all want to be him at the moment. Um, so that's my kind of end of the thing. How do I end it? No. Yeah, so I hope there's some ideas in there. It's quite a lot. Bravo. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Very interesting. Uh, we continue. Uh, our next speaker is Moti Abramovich. Moti Abramovich, Master of Science and Master of Business Administration, is the owner and CEO of Bruno Art Group. As CEO since 1995, Moti has accumulated considerable knowledge in the fields of gallery management, curation, and artist representation. Under his leadership, the group has expanded significantly from one gallery in Tel Aviv to an international force in fine art. Today, the Bruno Art Group has galleries and offices worldwide, and its artists exhibit in prominent art fairs. The list of artists represented by Bruno Art Group includes masters Jakob Agam and Marcel Janko alongside promising contemporary talent. So, Moti, welcome. Thank you. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, Laura, and thank you for having me here. Good morning. Uh, I'll show with you a short presentation. Um, um, 
So, as Laura mentioned, we present mainly Israeli artists uh, abroad. The Israel market is quite uh, quite small, so uh, we face the the issue of branding every day while introducing Israeli artists to different markets around the world. Um, so, as we all know, and we just discussed, every artist, except of creating the artwork, has in the back of his mind the the need to brand himself and his works, <coughs> his ideas. Uh, so, from the from many many years ago, artists who had this in mind. Uh, fortunately, today they have the social media and. Uh, it's, uh, it looks like it's much easier to to brand yourself. Uh, I want to uh, split uh, the the way of branding into two main categories, which of course they are not black and white and they merge into each other. But uh, of course, the there are artists that branding is the the, the it looks like their main activity. And some artist tries to come up with a new, totally new, different concept, and hoping to create a brand with with, with a new and with new with the new ideas and co or concepts. Um, so, as I said, uh, brand what we call brand mind what we call brand minded artists uh, trying to focus and. Uh, uh, Make sure that they, 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 their voice is being heard in all sorts of ways. Uh, and as I said, the technology helped them. Uh, and we all know about uh, recently, uh, recent artic, artic Banksy who uh, hides, hides his identity and, and destroyed one of his works. So, it looks like all kind of uh, of uh, ways are legitimate to, to work on your brand. Uh, in our opinion, a very interesting artist uh, is, uh, of course, Murakami, who started his career by studying uh, 80s Japanese uh, style paintings, but uh, then he felt that uh, <coughs> Create a change in the Japanese culture and, and created what uh, brought the Japanese uh, uh, symbols, uh, the anima and the magma traditions into his into his art, and uh, then heavily collaborate with big brands uh, like Louis Vuitton and others to to create his uh, to brand to brand his, to, to brand himself in his art. Uh, and of course, the other part that we declare that we believe in is are the concept-minded artists uh, that really make an effort to bring to bring to the world of art a new message, uh, a new concept, a new a new way of uh, of thinking, and build a brand. Uh, I would say <coughs> slowly, but uh, maybe more steady. And the example that I would like to present is, uh, as you mentioned, an artist that we work for many, many years in our group, uh, which, who is Yaakov Agam, he's 94 years old, and he's considered to be the founder or one of the founders of the kinetic art movement. His first works, uh, his first show was in 1951 in Paris, and he brought a new message to the world of, uh, of uh, art that is changeable, of art that can be touched okay. and moved. I'm sorry and to interrupt. Uh, we have one more minute for your presentation, so please go ahead. Okay, I'm done. Uh, so this is an example of art that is brand is being built uh, in 70 years, uh, one uh, one step at a time. And uh, less using the uh, the uh, social media, which of course he uses, but uh, uh, not as uh, as uh, as uh, as uh, many others. Uh, 
So I don't know if you were able to see the presentation or just heard me talking. We yeah. just heard you talking. Okay. So uh, I hope that I can I, I spread my message well. You did. You did. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Okay. So uh, next, our next speaker, and uh, I'm sorry, we're running out of time, is, uh, oh God, now I'm having trouble. So uh, please gaze, uh, please, okay. connect your microphone. Okay, perfect, thank you. Gaze Kreinen. Gaze Kreinen is a Dutch artist. His work is profoundly autobiographical and comprises performances, installations, photos, drawings, and paintings. In 1999, he won the prestigious Dutch art prize Chi de Rome in the discipline Visual Arts and Theatre with a reality project named Financing My Parents' Divorce. This resulted in the woman... <laughs> Perfect. Very good. <laughs> This resulted in the Woman in Divorce Battle on Tour with exhibitions and performances in New York, London, Paris, Luzern, Milan, Montreal, and other cities. For this project, he cooperated, amongst others, with the Fondation Cartier and the Italian artist Michelangelo Pistoletto. We're running out of time. I'm really sorry. This is, this is my problem, okay? So, Gaze, please go ahead. Welcome. I will, as brief as possible, uh, 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 my brand was uh, a, 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 a bit forced. Uh, 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 my brand is my mother. And the reason why uh, I, I had to help her, uh, 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 she was involved uh, with a, a divorce battle uh, uh, for 17 years. And uh, uh, what could I do? Uh, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I'm uh, uh, I'm an artist. Uh, uh, so uh, 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 I said to my mother, uh, 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 "I want you uh, uh, to put on a pedestal, and 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 I want you to feel good, and uh, uh, and." Uh, 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 what do you think about that? And uh, and she said, "Okay, uh, 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 le uh, let's do that." Uh, and um, well, in, in the end, I, I, I really uh, I won the Prix de Rome, and uh, uh, my mother and I went on a world tour for ten years, uh, and it was wonderful to help her. Uh, but, but also to set her mind on different uh, things. <laughs> uh, and um, uh, so my brand is my mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, how closer you can get. <laughs> Yeah. Um, my brand is my mother, and and, and she's my uh, biggest proud. Uh, and please look at my website. And yeah. uh, 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 my mother is eighty-one, and she's still fucking beautiful. Thank you so much. Yes. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Gaze. So our last speaker today is Bertrand Freisleben. Bertrand Freisleben studied sculpture at the Mutesius Academy of Fine Arts and Design in Kiel. He relocated to New York City where he worked as a conceptual artist till 1992. Back in Germany, he studied both history of art and philosophy at the Freie Universität Berlin till 1998. Mm. The same year, he received the Grand Prix of the Academy of Fine Arts of the mm. Institute de France. After the completion of his studies, he taught compositional analysis and surface geometry at the Institute of Art History at the Freie Universität de Lille until 2005. In 2000, he was invited as a guest professor at the Université Paris 8. 
Uh, Fires 11 works only from live models, as we see behind them, and for the past two decades has been devoted to sculpted portraits. Artistically, he follows the images of Naum Gabo, Kandinsky, and Richard Serra. Hello, Bertrand, welcome, thank you. Please go ahead. Hello, you all. Hello, hello, folks. It was very nice hearing all your, uh, your, your, your contributions. Uh, I right now go and share my screen. Um, to get you access to my presentation. So here it is. Thank you. Mm. So mm, oh, now I, I see you. This is okay. Okay. Anyhow, so I don't see your reaction. So, but you see it, don't you? We yes. see you. Okay, yeah. perfect. So, so as my name is Freies Leben, which means translated in English free life, I uh, thought when I had my first, uh, yeah when I began seeing all the ambiguities in life and in society, well, I should make an art brand that that, uh, that kind of uh, uh, yeah, works with irony on the whole thing. And so I, I in allusion to the World Wildlife Fund, I developed a World Free Life Fund. Mm, and so I took as well the, the, um, the logo. And as you see with the, with the trooping, the colors here, this is kind of a beauty uh, while, while while dropping individuality, so this okay. was uh, this was just uh, don't want to talk too much because the time is running. Um, oh, it doesn't. How's this work? Okay, this is me uh, in my first solo show. This was 1991 in New York in 560 Broadway, where the Dino De Luca building now um, and Prince uh, Eka. Broadway, corner Broadway, mm. and when it comes to branding, it is more like on the one hand you have the brand, on the one hand you have the image, and this is a kind of uh, you want to say something, and that what you place actually is not the same thing what you mean, it is just the form of what you think you have said, and then there is the spectator who is looking at this and how big is the overlap of, uh, of understanding to the one what is meant? And so my whole work was concentrated about what is perception, what is, yeah, how does communication work? And I was so much interested in really understanding. And this is the main question I have in my whole life, in my whole art life. And so in this exhibition that was uh, pending down from the, uh, from the ceiling, uh, this envelope. It was so high uh, in the air that no one could reach it. And there was written on it, the sublime is inside. And this is basically my, my most important work um, because this, uh, this, this showed me what I really wanted to, to discover, what is inside, what is the search worth it. And so... Uh, I started to search the sublime in portraits. While I was this days very contemporary and in, in, around in, in New York in, with all the, the gallery scene, um, now I started doing this. I, I love this work, by the way. I really Pardon me? Like That's really good. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Anyhow, I'll yeah. continue. The time runs. So, so this, I just read some examples. Um, ting, 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 ting. Ah. Okay, so th this is uh, Kurt Mazur. This is this year is a bust of Claudia Abado. This is uh, Berghain, Bouncer, um, um, Sven Marquardt. This is our former president, and so on. I'm pretty pretty successful in this uh, surroundings, but as you see, all I really am interested in. It's not high personalities, but who is this? What kind of soul is inside of this? How, how, what kind of personality do we see? And who am I to this personality while making a portrait? And who is he or she for me? So, so and sorry, my presentation is not very... So, the next one. Your presentation is perfect. Don't worry. Thank you. So, and then it happened seven years later, um, later from, the, from the show in New York, 
I won this Grand Prix de l'Académie des Beaux-Arts, the Institut de France. And this just juxtaposed me in the position, had I been a contemporary thinker this, this, this early days, now I was regarded as totally backwarded. And, and as if I didn't understand what art today is. And this was the reaction on, on my work uh, uh, yeah, the, the following years. Mm. And so I don't work with any gallery now. And, and I made only four shows in the last 20 years. And, and I never sold via a gallery because the art world um, denies access to the context, to the contemporary context, as long as you do portrait sculpture. Mm. I understand. And, and this has a certain reason. I could go much deeper, but I show just the obvious reasons, which is this. Were Hitler and Stalin or Mao couldn't be themselves. They had to be placed up in a kind of uh, ideologic abuse of our subject um, to, to give this representation. And of course, I understand that our that our world was fed up with this. Is this real? The, the, the yes, this is real. Done. This is a weird, weird, real thing. I'm really sorry. For... <laughs> so anyhow, so yeah. Uh, but this this is to understand if you if you touch the the subject of portrait it's sculpture, uh, you have mm -hmm. to you have to uh, you have to touch it differently. <laughs> you really have to be able to show. It is not to admire a hero, but it is to um, appreciate uh, the subtleness of a human being, the sublime of a human being, and that any person is worth to be looked at. And I really wanted to know better. I wanted to understand, as I said, with this envelope. And so I got much deeper into understanding form in general. I'm a sculptor and I wanted to know that form. So this is... Okay. I'm, I'm really sorry, Bertrand. I'm I'm going to uh, interrupt you because uh, I'm actually afraid that we're going to be cut off. Okay. And, uh, we uh, I would really like to uh, take some questions from the audience, and if okay. uh, you want to uh, talk among each other, that's also a possibility. Audience, can I, can, can I have just one, uh, just like ten seconds more? Yes, please. Okay, so so. I go into I go into surface research that leads me to 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 new uh, conclusions, and now I'm going to present uh, a kind of notation of of spatial form as I found a new analysis made. A, I claim to patent right now, and this is going to be a new Earth art, showing kind of essential what is form or how is form built. In kind of combination of sublime and analyzes. So. Okay, brilliant, Bertrand. Thank you very much for your wonderful presentation. And uh, so now I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm. Uh, I don't know if people are sending uh, us messages or not. Because uh, unfortunately, I'm not very acquainted with. Uh, the software, but please, if uh, you would have some final conclusions or some final comments that uh, you would like to add to the discussion, this is the moment. And audience, if you want to intervene and send a question, please do. Uh, Christina, I think that you're trying to say something, but I don't see it. Can you talk? Okay. Yeah, that's it. I'm giving you the mic, Christina. Can you, can you? Ask a member of the panels, yeah. how much, hello, hello. how much uh, freedom has an artist to be uh, selective about the, um, uh, the collectors or the sponsors of their respective shows? Because there is a reputational risk related to the artist, a reputational risk of sponsors. Um, you uh, have... Um, explained uh, a little bit earlier, Bernard, about uh, the oligarchs collecting contemporary arts. So thank you for expressing your views about it. Can I talk upon this? Um, I've, I've come across it in a few shows. A bit, uh, uh, over the last couple of years, one of the really big things is big pharmaceutical companies, particularly dealing in opiates, sponsoring institutions. And a lot of artists, contemporary artists, have sort of shunned 
those organisations. And I've turned down a couple of shows that have been sponsored by BP um, because I don't like things that hurt the environment. And that's hurt my reputation. I mean, I haven't been in big shows I could have been in, but I think um, it was important for me to sort of do what I believed in and not support that stuff. But a sad thing is when a collector's reputation changes over time because you may have sold work 10, 15 years ago and you can't control what they're going to do now. And obviously my work is in houses I wish it wasn't in. Um, And that's very sad. I have no control over that. Okay, Christina, thank you so much for for your question. Um, Now I see the messages. Somebody else wants to intervene? Okay, uh, some final thoughts from uh, our speakers today before uh, we are disconnected. I found um, a really interesting line in Andy Warhol's diary where he said when he gets home, he loves to take his Andy off. And I think it's a really interesting thing that he puts his brand to bed before he goes to sleep. Yeah, yeah. That, that is very true. And uh, also, as I said in the beginning, so uh, Andy Warhol was taking many of his strategies actually from Salvador Dali. And I thought that it was very, very interesting uh, what you said uh, about uh, so your um, advice to younger artists who are building their brand of thinking about themselves in terms of persona. That's exactly what they were doing, both Dali and uh, Warhol. Maybe artists should uh, destroy their brand, you know, deliberately, because uh, they shouldn't be predictable. They should be against the establishment and uh, they should surprise. Uh, so I think just destroy your own brand. <laughs> Let's start all over again. Fantastic. Are you sure that you're not an artist yourself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I so know, okay. It's fine. I think uh, we're going to leave it at that. Uh, thank you so much um, to our audience today. And uh, thank you again, Moti, Bernhard, Gaze, Bertrand, and Stuart. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Laura. Fantastic. Thank you, Laura. Uh, 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 thank you for meeting you uh, all. Uh, oh, you sorry. Are I'm back right now. Persons. Great. I'm back and I've, I missed all the discussion, did I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you didn't. Oh, this is so you were definitely busy. there. Thank you very much, everybody. Hope we can me- meet in person soon. Yeah. 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 That, that is anyone, uh, uh, sorry, can, excuse me. Is anyone of you staying in this room together right now? I would Never. rather. Well, I'm not alone. But, uh, <laughs> can any one of you summarize me up what happened, right? Arise uh, 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 you up? <laughs> what, do, what do you mean? <laughs> well, I, I didn't get the discussion. I was off like three minutes or five or anything. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, I just, just after my presentation, I lost the connection. And so I didn't follow up anything. So, okay. so uh, I will give you a summary. But uh, for now, I okay. Uh, I'm gonna take Christina's I want to make again, eh? last question if I can. Because I don't uh, of course, you can. no, I don't know if uh, the the oh. software allows me. Okay, Christina. And I would like to stay and and uh, explain to you uh, because it was my actually oh, my question. So if you want to, thank you. And thank you all. It was very interesting to me, at least. Thank you. Bye-bye. Lovely to see you all. I need to get to my studio, so I'm going to say goodbye. But um, Thank you very much, all of you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Laura.